This print of the Last Supper is a woodcut made by the German artist Albrecht Dürer in 1510. When he made this work, Dürer was 39 years old. He was already one of the most successful and famous artists in Europe. Dürer was a prolific artist, especially in printmaking. His prints, such as the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, or Adam and Eve, established Dürer as the leading German artist of his time. This Last Supper woodcut, from a series of prints known as the Large Passion, is an opportunity for us to consider how Dürer employed his art as a means of visualizing his own desire to identify with Christ. This Last Supper woodcut depicts Christ and his twelve disciples at the moment when Christ announces that he will be betrayed by someone at that very table. The disciples react with the range of emotion from disbelief to suspicion. The guilty culprit is, of course, Judas. He sits on our side of the table, greedily clutching a money bag. The table separates Judas from Christ, excommunicating him. The placement of Judas on our side of the table, with his back to us, makes him what we call in art history a surrogate figure. We are meant to identify ourselves with Judas. Through this figure of Judas, Durer implies our own culpability in Christ's betrayal. In this careful examination of Durer's Last Supper, you may have already noticed that this image has 14 figures. Christ, his twelve disciples, and an unidentified figure. The identity of this fourteenth man is a mystery. His placement in the foreground of the scene and in the lower left corner of the composition, which is the point from which we start to read the composition, gives this unidentified figure considerable importance. But who is he? Heinrich Wolflin, an esteemed scholar of Dürer's art, described this figure as the innkeeper who pours the wine. But why does Durer feature the innkeeper in this print? What does including a stranger at this moment of intimacy and betrayal add to Durer's image? Visually, this figure is a compositional counterbalance to Judas. The poses of the two figures are visual opposites in several ways. Perhaps this faithful servant is also a spiritual counterbalance to Judas. Pouring the wine, as Christ will later pour out his own blood, this servant is a model of grace realized in action. Furthermore, by including the innkeeper, Durer was able to add a fourteenth man, a figure who is not Christ or a disciple, but rather just a common person. Durer could have even used this man as a means of adding his own self-portrait into this image of the Last Supper. If we compare the face of the innkeeper with Durer's other self-portraits, there are notable similarities. The sharp cheekbones, the angular nose, the curly hair, and most importantly the beard. At a time when many German men were clean-shaven, Durer's beard was a sort of personal signature. In fact, Durer frequently included self-portraits in many of his works. We see this tendency to include his own image in some of his most important altarpieces, including his 1506 Feast of the Rose Garlands and his Adoration of the Holy Trinity, painted in 1511. Durer's propensity for including his own image in so many of his paintings has led scholars to search for so-called hidden self-portraits. These proposed self-portraits include the bearded king in the Adoration of the Magi, a print of the prodigal son, and even one drawing in which Durer is supposed to have used his own head 
attached to the body of a woman. Therefore, it is entirely plausible, and in keeping with his temperament, that Durer could have included his own image in this Last Supper. Because Durer featured himself in so many of his paintings, he is the first European artist whose life and work can be told through self-portraits. Albrecht Durer was born May 21, 1471, in the city of Nuremberg. From a young age, Durer had artistic ambitions. A self-portrait that he made when he was 13 years old demonstrates that Durer already had considerable talent and self-confidence. Although his city of Nuremberg was one of the most prosperous in Germany, Durer also traveled extensively throughout what is today Germany, France, Switzerland, Belgium, and the Netherlands. Most famously, Durer made two trips to Venice. There he absorbed artistic lessons of the Italian Renaissance. In Durer's 1498 self-portrait, completed shortly after his return from his first trip to Italy, he depicts himself not as a manual laborer, but as a humanist gentleman. Durer's Last Supper, completed within a few years of his return from his second trip to Venice, shows his understanding of Italian Renaissance art. In 1500, Durer painted one of the most famous self-portraits in the history of art. Scholars generally agree that Durer deliberately employed this idealized, frontal, and symmetrical view of his face in order to resemble depictions of Christ. An image of the blessing Christ, such as this work by Hans Memling, served as Durer's inspiration. This type of devotional image was very popular in 15th century Northern European art. In this self-portrait, Durer has gone so far as to alter his appearance to conform his own image to that of Christ. Although as seen in his other self-portraits, Durer had blonde hair, in this work he depicts his hair and beard as brown, the traditional color of Christ's hair in Northern Renaissance art. Perhaps what is most gripping about Durer's self-portrait are his eyes. As the artist's face emerges from the dark background, his gaze looks right through us. In the detailed realism of Durer's painting, his pupils act like convex mirrors. In the reflection of Durer's eye, we can see a cross. This is probably a window frame in the artist's studio but its meaning is clear. If the eyes are the windows to the soul, Durer's sight is fixed on Christ. Durer's famous self-portrait has often been interpreted as an image that is not only self-depiction, but also a statement of artistic purpose. This self-portrait, as well as Durer's inclusion of himself in so many of his religious works, suggest an adherence to the Devotion Moderna. This modern devotion was a form of piety popular in the 15th century. Based on Thomas Akempis' The Imitation of Christ, the modern devotion emphasized personal piety with a spiritual objective of becoming more like Christ. Durer's Last Supper is a visual statement of his desire to connect with Christ. Notice his monogram in the foreground. There is a line, visually articulated by the folded tablecloth and even the crack in the wood, that spiritually connects Durer and Christ. As a devotional narrative image, the visual structure of Albrecht Durer's Last Supper makes the sacred moment more directly accessible to the viewer. 